Do you know this violin? It happens to be one of the most fantastic instruments in the world, made by Giuseppe Guarneri. And it also happens to be called the Paganini, because, you guessed it, it was owned by Niccolo Paganini, held in his very own hands. So before we continue, we'd like to thank the Chime Museum and Foundation for letting us play and record on some of the best instruments in the world. What makes this such an incredible instrument, besides the fact that arguably the world's finest virtuoso found it worthy to play on? The first thing that we can point to is the sound, the richness, the depth, and the warmth of the tone. Just listen to the bottom of the sound. It almost works its way vertically and then spreads out into this really rich tone like sound reaching to the bottom of a well. And then the vibrations continue to surround each note progressively, making for a really thick, luscious tone. So who is the maker? This is a 1706 Giuseppe Guarneri violin. Now, the label inside always says Giuseppe Guarneri Filius Andre, or the son of Andrea. His father was Andrea Guarneri of Cremona, and he worked and studied in the shop of Niccolo Amati, who was also a master violin maker, or a luthier. Andrea Guarneri passed his craft onto his sons, and Giuseppe Guarneri, the maker of this violin, also had two sons that continued in the business. One of them was Bartolomeo Giuseppe Guarneri, and he is more commonly known as Guarneri del Gesù, and probably the most famous luthier in the Guarneri family. This instrument was owned by Niccolo Paganini, who lived from 1782 to 1840 and was this incredibly influential violinist and musician from his time and continuing into our time. He expanded the violin repertoire and created technical music that wasn't deemed possible in his day. He was really tall and thin and these attributes also lent themselves to his hands. His fingers were said to be impossibly long and allowed him to write these incredible compositions for himself, and consequently, violinists will be stretching their fingers until the end of time. It's said that he quite possibly had Marfan syndrome, which is characterized by the tall and thin signs. For instance, someone with Marfan syndrome will be able to overlap their pinky and their thumb when they put their fingers around their wrist which I clearly cannot do, and the thumb will be able to cross the palm entirely when it's laid flat. So imagine the possibilities with hands like these. When we train as violinists, our left hand often stretches and becomes more flexible. My right hand, for instance, is smaller. I can stretch it, but my left hand will always be able to stretch more. Paganini and his rivalry with violinist Louis Spohr was also directly responsible for advancements made in the violin as an instrument. For instance, the fingerboard became longer as violinists kept searching for higher pitches, and it also became more curved as opposed to flat in the Baroque style, and this allowed the instrument to make a larger sound more capable of carrying over an orchestra. And Spohr himself also invented the chin rest in the early 19th century. Without it, the chin sat to the right of the tailpiece and was constantly shifting. Next time, we're going to examine an older violin made by Niccolo Amati, who was Guarneri's father's teacher. So make sure to hit subscribe if you enjoyed this, and there will be more videos coming your way. Cheers. Forms how you